start over again. Okay. We're not live? Well, either you are now. Take a second. Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry, guys. We are live. I didn't know we were live. It's Deanna and Stitches Quilting. And we are live. Um, my husband and I are here in um, in Hawaii, and we are uh, in Kona. And there is a Hawaiian quilt museum, and I really wanted to share this with you. And Corey's filming for me, you guys. Everybody, Corey's here, and Thank he's you, filming. <laughs> and so I didn't really have my vibe on with, like, when he was going to start the video, so apologize. <laughs> Anyways, but we are here with Karen, and Karen, um, actually, you started the the Kona Hawaiian Quilt Museum, and it is actually a place that you can go see, and it was so cute. I pulled up quilt uh, stuff on my phone, and it said three minutes from where I was. I was, like, so excited. So you are in a phenomenal location that if you come and visit Kona, I mean, this is definitely not something that you have to go very far for, out of your way on the big island. Right here to go in see. downtown Kona. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's, it's amazing. So I'll put this down. So tell us. And I'm really raw looking. We're on vacations. I have no makeup on. My hair is Enjoying still slightly home. wet. That's what I have a swimsuit kind of on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, but it's fun, okay? So, okay. So, Karen, tell us about what you've done and what you've created. And you, you uh, let's start right here. You were telling me about this, and then about I said, Kappa. let's do a live video. Okay, Absolutely. so I'm going to have you stand right here, and I'll stand okay. to the side. Okay. Well, and the first thing I want to say is it's not just me. I've had a lot of wonderful help from a lot of people here in Kona. Okay. Um, we, the Kona Hawaiian Quilt Museum Society is a nonprofit, 501c3. We have a board, and everyone on the board has been tremendously helpful. But wow. um, we got this idea a couple of years ago in 2016 mm -hmm. and thought that there needed to be a quilt museum in Hawaii to feature the art and culture of Hawaiian it quilting. Is. Because it is. It's, it's so wonderful. Unique. And it's so fun. When I come here to visit, I just love taking pictures and sharing things mm -hmm. then out to everybody on social media and everything else because it is really a beautiful art and it's very unique. It's so maybe very you can, unique. It's only yes, done here in the Hawaiian It is. Islands. And so, so maybe you can mm -hmm. explain some of that and to we us. We will. Too. We okay. absolutely but will. This is interesting. This is where it starts. Before there was fabric in here in Hawaii, there was kapa. Okay. And kapa is made from the bark of the paper mulberry tree. The wow. word in Hawaiian is wow, okay. And and it's these fibers, and we've got a sample of the fibers okay. here. They strip the bark off the tree, and they alternately soak it and pound it. And is this really real? Yeah. That's this actual is really real. fibers, yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is cool. And I'm able to touch and it. And this is one of the tools. Oh, it says, please do not touch. Corey, <laughs> show this. Please do not touch. Okay, when you come here, do, don't touch it. I shouldn't have touched it's it. okay. Okay, I'm too overstimulated. I'm very excited. Okay, but tell us more. So it gets pounded and flattened out and then soaked in salt water and pounded again and flattened okay. out and kind of, the fibers kind of felt together and they okay. create this. Wow. This is a sheet of kappa. It is not, it is... Uh, Con contemporary. It wasn't made that long ago. It's, there's still kappa makers here in the island, and they yes. provided me with a piece. And it is just as rough and scratchy as it looks. Really? And that's what they used for clothing and bedding and everything. Really? They didn't have fabric. Wow. So when the um, Christian missionaries came over um, in the 1820s and they brought soft cotton fabric, the Hawaiians went a little bit nuts because okay. this was way better than, than what they had been wearing and sleeping on. Yes. But it's still a traditional um, thing that we wanted to s recognize this as the beginning of fiber arts Absolutely. here in the Hawaiian Islands. Well, and yes, and especially with people that didn't have all the different resources and right. technology and what was this happening. Is what they that did. is so beautiful. And there's a piece here that is backlit and you can see, oh. I don't know if it'll come yeah, through, the but organic. The, the pattern that gets pounded yeah. into the fibers in the final stages, and this becomes like a watermark, like a signature of the kappa maker. There's, mm. You can see little diamond designs and little chevron designs. Yes. And that is um, it, from the tools that are used in and the making of the kappa. Uh, Corey, let us know what comments you have when you see comments. And hello, everybody, you guys. I miss you guys so much. I love you guys. Okay. Yeah, I miss you guys, love. And if you have questions for us, ask the questions, and then Corey will let us know what your questions are. And and Karen yes, will be so sweet be to answer to. questions. Yes. So let us know, Corey, if we have questions, if there's questions and okay. stuff. So ask lots of questions. Well, tell us, can you tell us about Some of the things Andrea? we have offered here are um, items for sale in our gallery. Okay. And this is a local woodcut artist. And wow. we've got a book here on her work. Okay, wow. And 
she talks all about how she makes these woodcut designs. Okay. And she They're has beautiful. just recently been putting them oh, wow. Look onto at that. fabric. And so, wow. And she's had Robert Kaufman um, translate oh, really? them into fabric that and are she's available. Pillows, and these are available for sale. Wow, that that's really neat. So that's really that's fun what that too. is. Okay, very very good. So, um, as I said, the Hawaiians were very interested in in fabric and in sewing from the missionaries. They were taught and, but they wanted to come up with their own design. For they, they would have been taught the applique, like Baltimore album, and everything yes. would have been something. The New England missionaries would have shared with them, so they knew about applique, they knew about piecing and patchwork. Okay, but they wanted to come up with their own unique style of quilting, and they did, and they did. They really, really <laughs> yes. did. They did. So, have you guys seen Hawaiian quilts before? Let me know if you guys have seen Hawaiian quilts. And um, we could start here with a really good example of one before oh, we get you're, over there. You're so right. Um, the thing is about a Hawaiian quilt, it's always a symmetrical design. It's a little bit like when you were a kid in school and making snowflakes. You are right. And you folded a piece of paper up into fours or eights. Yes. And you cut a design and you opened it up. You are right about they that. They do the same thing, but they do it with fabric. Fabric. Yes. So it will always be a symmetrical design. Okay. And it, then it is applique onto a contrasting background. Well, and it's almost a reverse applique, right? In a way. There are different, some of them are. Okay. Some of them, the traditional, traditional Hawaiian quilting would be needle turn applique. Okay. This, the darker piece here is the top. It's laid on top. It's turned under and stitched down. Okay. So, but wasn't, it, aren't these almost like two whole cloths? These yes. Two, yes. These are not individual pieces. Mm -hmm. So these, they have right. two, the, the, the orange and the purple, and the orange was one And big then piece. they traced this pattern right. onto the, the purple. The purple got folded up into fours or eights. Oh, this really? One, yeah, the purple gets And so it's actually cut eights. in and the fourths and the eighths in the process. It's cut while it's folded up. Wow. And then they oh open gosh. it up, lay it on top, baste it down. And as we go on, I have other samples of you pieces guys, that are basted. That's like a... Um, I used to love to make um, folded snowflakes when yes. I was a little girl yes. on paper. It's exactly but like that. But it's yeah. like one that doesn't break and it lasts forever. <laughs> it lasts forever. Wouldn't that be fun to do? Uh, is anyone so, saying anything? That's really fascinating. Somebody says yes. I love Hawaiian quilts. Somebody asked, did they did they dye the type of fabric on the wall? If so, how? Oh, so how did they dye oh, this your stuff fabric? over here? The, the the pop, the kapa. Oh, maybe fabric? she's talking about the kapa. She doesn't say. She says the type of fabric on the wall. So, maybe so do they? Did they dye? Do they dye this kind? It. it was done with um, again wooden tools that had designs carved into them, and dyes painted onto that design and stamped. Hmm. Oh, really? Or printed onto the kapa. So it was more like a, a okay, yeah, very like cool. Stamping. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's really neat. Now, if she's asking about this fabric, that's commercially produced from Hoffman. That's right, nice. that's, and that's, it's that's, been screen printed. <laughs> screen printed. And that's yeah. and, Just and made in design. what other country? Yeah. This is really be beautiful. This is an important historical piece. This uh, this quilt was made in the 1920s. Okay. All so right. it's one of our nice uh, vintage quilts. And the story on the Hawaiian flag quilts kind of depends on who you read and who you talk to. But basically, okay. um, from you what can I go understand, around the pan on that quilt too, or but or us. When yep. um, Hawaii was annexed as a territory, when yes. the overthrow of the Hawaiian government happened, um, in sort of a protest, they, they couldn't fly their Hawaiian flag anymore. So quilters made Hawaiian flag quilts so they could oh still they could still mm. sleep under their flag. Oh, mm. that is and so, so it beautiful. Was a, as quilts often are, a social commentary, a yeah. political mm. statement. Um, quilts have been and that so this throughout. Is how and they this was their were still statement. loyal to their mm -hmm. yes, uh, how they felt about their country. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh, so that's beautiful. So you'll see beautiful. the crown that honors the Hawaiian monarchy. Wow. And the Hawaiian flag quilts. And there's many different designs. There's not a single Hawaiian flag quilt design. Okay. They had they took different forms, but they had common elements, okay. including mm. the Hawaiian flag and the crown, or the description of the. And Something then this says right here, it's hand applique, machine piecing, and hand quilting on there. Yes. So it's beautiful. It is. It mm -hmm. is really, really beautiful. Wow. What? What? And from the 1920s, too. Mm -hmm. mm, my. These are another two pieces that are over 100 years old. 
Wow. They were made here on the Big Island. Okay. And um, by Teresa Quinn, we have the name of the quilter, and they were in the collection of Roberta Mueller, who was the granddaughter of Teresa Quinn. Wow. Um, again, classic examples of traditional Hawaiian okay, quilting. Okay, but this is pretty neat what you have printed here. It says, Teresa Quinn made this quilt for her sister, Catherine Isiki Singh. Mm -hmm. It was passed on to her son, Thomas Singh, and later gifted to Roberta Lucas Mueller, granddaughter of Teresa Quinn. This quilt has been generously donated to the collection of Kona Hawaiian Quilt Museum. You guys, we need to like document all of our own yes. quilts that way too. Yes. But I love this history that you mm -hmm. have there and it's an early mm -hmm. 1900s. That's and just beautiful. We do know a little more about the maker, Teresa Quinn. We do know that she made quilts for Queen Liliokalani, who was mm. the last reigning monarch of the Kingdom of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. These quilts never graced the Queen's bed, but when the Queen went into exile, the quilt that was on her bed was made by Teresa Quinn. Oh, wow. So it's a really fun that. connection. To well, and I, there's something that I want to point out in this quilt is right here you have seaming that goes across. Yes. And then down here there's seaming. So this is about right. the 42 inch width. Is that correct? Exactly. From Well, I mean, were bolts of fabric really 42 inches back then? I don't know. As but Presumably. But yeah, it's somewhere in there. But because these, they had these, to create the whole cloth. Right, because mm -hmm. they could have... And but what's interesting is yeah the whole cloth is here and they you keep the seaming and then as you said it was folded together like a snowflake. Mm -hmm. How are you accurate with these things? I guess it's not about accuracy. Lots of pins. Yeah, really? <laughs> really? So lots of and pins. Holding those four or eight layers together. Wow. Really? While you cut and very sharp scissors. Oh, you guys, yeah. should we do yeah. a tutorial on this? <laughs> should we do like a little tutorial sure. and make like a pin cushion? Or I don't know, what could we make? We could make a little wall hanging, maybe something small, just to experiment with it. That might be kind of fun. It would be very fun. I don't know. Okay, ladies, mm -hmm. just food for thought, food for thought. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. This is so interesting. So, coming on to this section of the we've got a lot going on oh, here. Oh, that's fun. Um, we have, every summer, we have a challenge sponsored okay. by Hoffman Fabrics. They donate a bolt of fabric. This okay. year, this was the fabric. That's beautiful. Do you know who it was designed by? Or? I don't know the designer. Okay, I'm curious. Yeah, I know, it's beautiful. Did you make that umbrella or did? No, this was one of the entries into the competition. I've been curious how people do this. There's a kit and a pattern. And the lady's going to come teach it next year at Quilting on the Beach, really? which if you'll let me talk about, I'll talk about Oh that my too. gosh, I will. <laughs> I definitely will. Okay. Everybody knows I talk too much, <laughs> for sure. So, so oh. this is our quilt challenge. Okay. The challenge was they had to use at least 16 square inches of the challenge fabric. Okay. The theme of the challenge was This is Hawaii. Okay. And the quilts had to be 30 inches square. Wow. So we, wow. we um, received some challenge quilts here, and they are so creative this year. Wow. You probably oh, all heard goodness. about our volcano. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So look two people did. Oh, you look. Ones. This is Pele, our volcano yes. goddess. Oh, wow. And you can see the challenge fabric is in the lay on oh, her yeah. head. Oh, it's beautiful. What art. I love quilters. I it's amazing. And this was Val Brewer mm -hmm. that did this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. And this one is even more fun. Fun. Wow. Uh, well, they're all fun. Yes. Um, but this is Catherine Wynn. And okay. The title is Tutu Pele Cleans Out the Ground. <laughs> <laughs> and what she did, it was fascinating. She took headlines that were in national news. Really? Um, over the last I love it. Um, several months. And they talked about boulders the size of school buses uh -huh. coming out of the volcano. Really? So she has school buses coming no out. No way. Boulders <laughs> the size of trucks. Really? Cars. These were all news headlines. Well, and this is why we've actually come to this island. To for, I mean, it. we're spending right. all of our eight days here oh my at goodness. this so island. So to just, yeah, we want to go see that. the volcano right. and we want to go do all that. And it talked about wow. flying boulders. So she has flying boulders, boulders with wings. <gasps> That it is so <laughs> darling. What a creativity. Such creativity. I, don't you love creativity? I do. That's I do. Why I do this. Okay, is anyone saying anything so awesome? People are saying oh thanks, my gosh. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Awesome. Okay. So here we oh. have um 
like a demonstration. Information about yeah. Hawaiian quilts. What are the five characteristics, and we've talked about them, mm -hmm. okay. that make it a Hawaiian quilt. And going on along the, the curtain there, we have information is how are these done? What's okay. the process? So if somebody could you know, look and see. Okay, wow. Another thing we have here in the museum wow. is a small library of books. We're building a collection about okay. Hawaiian quilting if people wanted to research or, or yes. look. We also have activities for keiki. I keiki children. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I taught elementary school for 20 years. So but I love being involved <laughs> with kids. Me too. I love kids. Oh, I didn't teach, but okay. I love children. I love making it accessible. It's fun. And we even have a scavenger hunt for kids. So oh. they can go around the museum and it's like find a find a quilt with fish in it or, you know, and yes. write the name of your favorite. And the end, oh, the, the back is design your own quilt. And, you know, get oh, them started I thinking love about it. design. And Absolutely. Oh, I love what you've done. We also offer pattern tracing okay. because Hawaiian quilt patterns were always, they were never published previously. They were okay. always just shared with close friends and that was quite an honor to receive a quilt pattern from someone. That oh, was wow. a big, big, big deal. To have something to and share of yourself. Yes, because you were sharing yourself. Wow. So we offer um, the opportunity for people to sit down and have the experience of tracing a pattern okay. and taking it And home. so when you, when, when people would share a pattern, would they just share this portion, yes. which is just the part that would be cut in the layers? Exactly. Oh, that's mm -hmm. so fascinating. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yep. That is so, so Very fascinating. Fun. And what kind of so, tracing paper are you is, using um, here? Architectural vellum. Okay. And the reason is because it's gridded. Yes. It's important to get the lines straight. So and is this what you typically you use when yeah. you're... She, yeah. um, let's also clarify that Karen owns a quilt store that's right next to this quilt museum. So when you come to visit the quilt museum, not only do you get to come and see a museum and learn everything, but then mm -hmm. you get to go next door to her shop. store <laughs> and shop. But it's not just that. It's um, My mm -hmm. husband even found some fabrics he really loved. And we'll have to show you what fabric Corey really loved over there <laughs> and what he wants me to make with it. But um, but it's a really mm -hmm. beautiful store. Well, thank you. I mean, it's a it's beautiful store, of tons of notions. So if you're mm -hmm. here and you forgot maybe something and you want to make a project or anything like that, she had a lovely group of women in the back that were knitting and um, that we're socially getting together. What other things do you offer over at your store? Oh goodness, classes all the time. Yeah. Um, several times a month. We have a Tuesday open sew group. Anybody can come anytime on Tuesday, bring whatever project they're working on. Even if you're traveling or visiting and you have a project, usually it's a hand project if you're traveling, but we also provide sewing machines, ironing boards, cutting mats, all usually that Usually I use. buy one when I'm on the island. In... No, if you want to come in No, I do. I shop. literally go and I, I just run to Walmart and I go oh. and I buy like a mm -hmm. and then we we take it back as oh. luggage huh Corey <laughs> yeah, it's what we do so <laughs> yeah and it's a lot of fun because we do get a lot of visitors who yes. come and just want a little break and come and sit and sew for a while oh so. my gosh you guys how spectacular is that the women mm -hmm. were so lovely in fact didn't I say that Corey yeah, how did. lovely everybody was just loving on each other and chatting and it's talking and it was just a beautiful atmosphere aloha so. is a very real thing it is it real. Is. So, it is real. Okay, so keep showing us more. So this is the quilt I was talking about that shows you the process. Now, okay. this one was begun in the 1940s okay. by the grandmother of the person it's on loan from. Okay. Um, and so you, you can see how she's laid it all out and she's basted it. All, wow. all the way around. And so you can see these seamings here. Yes. Where they've made how it the, the size of a, um, of a full quilt, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever size quilt they're going for. Mm -hmm. And, um, okay, so keep and explaining so more. So we hung it up just like it was to show the process. And do you continue and to <laughs> to thread based or are there different techniques that people do? Nowadays, a lot of people are doing glue basting. Ah, because okay, yeah. It's so much easier. Yeah. And it's that lovely, you know, washable glues that just, you know, it, Yeah, there's it's gone phenomenal products you out there. Out. So it's that are available. Yeah. However, there was an advantage to the basting and, and, yes. and, and some people still do it for this reason. You try and baste a pretty consistent quarter inch around the edge. Okay. And then when you turn the fabric under, you have the edge of the fabric meet the basting, and that gives you a nice consistent eighth of an inch to turn under. Oh, okay. You lose that when you glue baste. You don't wow. have that exact. Yeah, um, that consistency. Right, precise. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people are good enough. It doesn't matter. But, yes, um, exactly. For someone who's beginning, it gives you a nice 
turning. consistent edge to turn. Okay, wow. Mm. So you can beautiful. see she began the applique work up oh, here. Oh, look at that. This corner is Corey, starting. look at yeah. that. Wow. But then, as we all know, it became a UFO. Oh, <laughs> but it's a beautiful <laughs> UFO to understand. teach us what it is now. I mean, isn't it, wouldn't it be fun to have some of your UFOs hanging up in a museum? <laughs> I, I, maybe, maybe one day I'll have something like that. Okay, wow. So these are four more of our challenge quilts. Okay. And they're a lot of fun. Okay. And, and who do you open up the challenge to? Oh, is it to residents? Nationwide. Or is we it really? We go to Houston Quilt Market. Yes, I go to too. Yes, and we offer our challenge packets. They're $5 <clears throat> each. Wow. And the $5 is a donation to the museum. Yes. And then there's then that's it. There's no other entry fee. No really? other. Really, so you anything. don't necessarily have to be a resident of Hawaii oh, to participate. No, we. Okay, ladies, are... maybe this is what we need to do next year. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, and I could like ship you guys out. Yes. And then we've got people around the world that follow and Great. stuff. So that might be a fun thing to do. So for the five, what are your months of yours? You get a fat quarter of the fabric. Okay. And that's all you need. Then you wow. then you go from there. The hmm. um, challenge we have it ready by. That's usually when we launch it. Is at Houston in so the fall. In, in the market? fall, okay. Fall quilt market, but it's not just available at Houston. It could yes. be you know it's available here okay. too or wherever online. It's on our on the Quilt Passions website. Okay, you can very order good. Online a challenge packet. Okay, and it has all the instructions and all the inf inf information you need. Okay. to make your challenge quilt. Wow, okay, very so, fun, very fun. Yeah. Okay, well, anything, what else would you share? This is a, this is a quilt beautiful. by a local um, gentleman. Well, he made it when he was living on the island. He has since relocated to Honolulu, but wow. when his heart is here, he went for a job opportunity. Yes. As people do. Yes. But a beautiful piece. Oh, it is All beautiful. So this was made. this was actually stitched by a man. And it's, this is a gentleman. His name okay. is Rick Stark. Okay. And it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Wow. This is another one of Rick's right here. Wow. wow. And um and that this one he actually picked up on one it was already applique. This one is, is his very own design. Wow, it's beautiful. It's stunning. Mm -hmm. So what size is that quilt? It is 109 inches by 108 inches. Wow. So definitely king size. Yes. Yeah. And it's actually available for sale for $35,000. Can you guys believe that? So there are quilts that are for that are in the museum that are actually to display and then there's also some that it's like a gallery for when they're for sale, mm -hmm. which is really amazing mm -hmm. too. So mm -hmm. if you're ever interested, do you have any of your the quilts that are for sale on your do you have a website we have a yet? website a, okay. a new one and, and that's something we hope to get to at okay. some point yeah and to put we your need, gallery online. there's so much more we need a newsletter and you know and all yeah. that and a contact list but yes. um the web website just went live at the end of june so okay, we're good. still evolving yep stay tuned but there is lots of information on the website okay good all right. About. Now, this one over here is a different technique. Can you tell yes. us about that technique? This is over a here? lady right here on the Big Island. Okay. And she has some beautiful embroidery pieces. Wow. Um, these are um, embroidered orchids. Okay. And it just fit in with our with our tropical. Oh, it's theme. absolutely beautiful. It really is. In fact, we were learning a new technique of chicken scratch but it was more on the um, gingham yes. so that we were actually doing a tutorial on yes. so is this what she's doing over here she is doing chicken scratch and wow. when she first brought me this one I thought oh that's nice I'm not sure it fits with our concept but we'll take it it's lovely yes. it's beautiful oh no it's a phenomenal. and then I had someone correct me and say that no the um, Hawaiian ladies learning sewing from the missionaries would definitely have done this that this is the a chicken scratch they would have brought over and that they would have been taught especially they were they were very much into teaching the young hawaiian girls the domestic skills that yes. they thought they should know and sewing yeah. was included right and so these embroidery techniques cross stitch chicken scratch and everything are something they definitely wow. would have taught this is just phenomenal. someone's asking the name so. of the website oh what there. what is your website kona hqm K O N A H Q M at Kona H Q M dot org dot org. Oh, yeah, and we will that. put HQM dot org. And I'll be sure that. to put, oh, you guys try to share the video. I'll send somebody something if you can share the video. I'll send you something I buy 
Um, or if you guys can, if you guys can share the love, I'll, I'll pick somebody that did lots of sharing or love and I'll buy you something from here in Hawaii and then I'll ship it to you wherever you are in the world. It doesn't matter where you're at. I'll ship it to you. Okay, girls. Cause we gotta have fun. Um, okay. So this quilt is actually for sale for $2,500. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's something that, yeah, I'd be interested in any of these things. They're beautiful. <laughs> they They're really are. beautiful. Okay. And it continues around here. Okay. Now, let me tell a little bit about this is a quilt. Anything with an orange border right now is a special exhibit that's been okay. just here this week. So look at this, Corey. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we had two ladies from Japan contact oh. us. And they were going to be here. And they brought about a dozen quilts. And when we go back around, we'll see the rest of them. But there okay. wasn't room for this one on the other side. Wow. Oh. And these are 100% hand appliqued, hand quilted. And they are just stunning. They really um, are. This is the lady who's here. And it here, is definitely symmetrical. Mm -hmm. Again, that snowflake mm -hmm. thing with the palm trees. Mm -hmm. And um, and we can tag all the women, it, that whoever made it or created it in oh, great. the video and be sure great. to share everything. And you'll notice and the yes! islands. She quilted the oh, Hawaiian yes. island yeah. chain here is in the quilting. Yes, and then it's it being reverberated out yes. with her quilting lines. Mm -hmm. And, and is, that's like the water too, right. almost. And this is called echo quilting. Yes, that echo is, quilting. Right. Yes. And that yes. is another characteristic of a Hawaiian quilt, that you start with the design and you, you quilt around the edge of the applique design, then you go out about a half an inch and, and echo that. Then you mm. go out about you a half right. an inch more that and echo that. You are right. That is present in just about in every Hawaiian quilt. Hawaiian quilt mm -hmm. is the echo quilting. Mm -hmm. Wow. So do you have, I mean, on the island or things like that, do you, are they generally historically more hand quilted? But what about with machine quilting and all of that? Are they still doing that same type of echo quilting? They are. And, and you know, it's 2018. Right. So people are blending techniques and all kinds of things are happening. We right. have hand applique quilts that are machine quilted. Yes. And vice versa and yeah. everything in between. It's okay. It's all okay. Wow. But if you have someone who is doing a traditional, traditional Hawaiian right. quilt, it would be hand applique. Completely hand, hand. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you because it would be that you whole know, thing. You know, I think we have it's someone else joining okay, us. Good. Okay, good. Okay, of, of course. It's let's go on here. over. Look and let's keep looking. looking. Yes, and let's let her greet somebody else that's visiting. So that's got a lot of neat cross stitch. Does anybody have questions? People are just really just commenting. Yeah. Great. How neat this all is. It is, you guys. I'm so glad that we get to share this. And I am definitely raw. I mean, my hair is wet. I have a swimming suit on underneath here, a swimming suit skirt. But I mean, my husband and I were running errands and we stopped here, and then I was like, oh my, we have to share this. So I hope you can see my enthusiasm in wanting to share this with you to just be fully raw and naked here. But, um, but you guys, you can see that this is, once again, that two color aspect. If you guys want to list the different aspects and the way a quilt looks, we've got two colors here that they're working with. So typically Hawaiian quilts are two colors. The quilting is echoed out from um, the the point, but look here at this piece right here and see how there's quilting within the applique pieces too. I mean, it's really beautiful. Really, really beautiful. This quilt is $35,000. Okay, let's go back over and look at some of, here's a neat Hawaiian quilt, and you can see this one's, this is not a traditional Hawaiian quilt, but you can see there's some beautiful stippling around there. Um, it's just absolutely gorgeous. That one's for sale. We've got this one over here that's for sale, um, $10,000, but beautiful, beautiful work. This piece right here, you can see that they're working with a batik. So typically a Hawaiian quilt, remember, is the two fabrics. So one fabric on top of another, but even with this being a, a batik fabric, you have the different colorations that are going throughout, but this is definitely a very true Hawaiian quilt. And I love to see the seaming that happens where you can see that it's done with the whole cloth and that genuine folding over of making the um, paper. Um, like the the snowflake or whatever, but in water. Okay, here we have a gorgeous um, turtle that was part of the challenge. This might give you guys ideas for next year. Who knows? We've got a Hawaii welcomes 
Chi Uli. And I need to learn what that is. The roving tides of the jellyfish challenge is what this was called. Here's another turtle with a beautiful lei, floral lei. Um, does anybody recognize what these are? Anybody recognize these little things right here? That's so sweet. They're, they're little, in fact, I gave some of those away, but they're a little um, a yo-yo. Yeah. yeah, like a, they're little yo-yos combined mm -hmm. together. And look at this one, that's absolutely beautiful. It says Sundance on Kauai Bay. Wow, well, what? anything else that. that we should show? Or anything else You're that you'd like to share? You're going to tell us about share? quilting on the beach. Quilting oh, on the beach. Oh, want, thank you. My husband keeps track of us. <laughs> oh. Doesn't Corey keep Great. track of yes. us all the well, time? You guys that, that sounded thank interesting. you. Sounded keeps fun. track. Quilting on the Beach is our semi-annual quilting retreat hosted by Quilt Passions. Mm. And it is so much fun. You have to come. Sometime. Oh my gosh, I would love to. It's, a, it's an eight-day retreat. We oh, have six days you guys. in paradise. In Hawaii. I know it's rough, yeah. but somebody's got to do it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. So it's six days of classes okay. with our own local instructors as well as several guest instructors wow. from all over the world. We bring wow. in teachers from all over the United States and Canada and Australia yes. and all all over so six days of classes wow and then we also do a bus tour around we do a shop hop our, our big island shop yes. hop is going yes. on at the february one and in the summer it's row by row so you do so this we do twice a, a year twice a year every oh february and every july really and so we do a bus tour all the way around the island and you get to stop at all the quilt shops and wow and that's really fun and then every Every February, there are a couple of local shows. It alternates. It's the Waimea show some years, and it's the Skea show other years. But mm -hmm. you'll get to see a quilt show. A and they are, quilt show okay, wow. In February. And in July, we sponsor the Tropical Inspirations Quilt Show here in Kona. Okay. So um, the eight days, the, the six days of classes are bookended by bus tours. Okay. The best thing about it is it's completely a la carte because I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh my God, it's just the most cost of fortune. It really yes. doesn't. Yeah. You, it's not a big expensive package. We don't even believe in a registration fee. None of that. Yes. You, you just pick and choose the things you want to do. Yes. Because it's Hawaii. So you take class one day, the next day you go snorkeling. Wow. You take another <laughs> class, the next day you drive up to, to Javi and see the northern end of the island. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow customize your own program. Wow. So it ends up being very reasonable. Okay. Um, wow. Last February, we had over 150 quilters join us from all over the world. Wow. I want to come. Yes. Does anyone else want to come? <laughs> oh my gosh. So you'll be rubbing shoulders with quilters. So he says, how do we find info on the Yes. Okay. 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 You go to the Quilt Passions website, okay. quiltpassions.net. And our February 2019 information will be out by the end of August. Okay. All right, you guys, I will put the links up above. and um, Or if someone wants to share any of the links in the comments, that would be great, too. But how fun it's is that? It's really, really fun. And wow. come in a group. We take great care, really good care of groups. Okay. Oh, and you, you can stay. <laughs> we hold it at the King Kamehameha Hotel, the Marriott. Mm -hmm. Really? So, like, a lot of people have Marriott points, and they yes. stay there. But you don't have to. You can okay. do condos, vacation rentals. I mean, it's nice just to come downstairs yes. to class, but you absolutely don't have to. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, so get a group together, do a condo, okay. and come take quilting classes. Wow. Mm. You guys, that sounds like a lot of fun. I, I would it, love to party mm. with all of you guys. We call it quilting on the beach, and a lot of people say, are you out there on the beach quilting? No. Good question. <laughs> good question. <laughs> really good question. Yes. No. Um, we hosted at the, as I said, the Marriott, the King Kamehameha Hotel. Okay. You are inside in the hotel ballrooms. I mean, classic kind of retreat style, right? Yes. Yeah. And there's air conditioning and terrific lighting, ironing boards, cutting stations, everything you what could possibly What do people do about need. sewing machines? Do we bring our sewing machines with us? That's another really good question. Okay. Some people can bring their own machines. Yes. You know, some people more comfortable on their yeah. machine, but we do have machine rental available. You okay. do not need to bring your machine. Okay. Same thing for large notions. Like we've got cutting stations and cutting mats. You okay. don't need to bring a giant cutting mat on the airplane. Okay. We've got Very them good. there for you. Okay. But what we do offer is you can ship some of your supplies ahead. Throw things oh, from wow. your supplies okay. in a flight in a priority mail flat rate yes. box. Yeah. 
and send it along. And yes. that way you don't have to worry about checking it or carrying yeah, it. Yeah, and shipping to Hawaii is not a problem from no, no, the U.S. No. It's all same, flat rate. Yeah, it's the same, same cost stuff. as shipping it across yeah. the street. Because mm -hmm. I actually have customers mainland. in Hawaii yeah. that yeah. I'll ship to, and same it's price. been really, a, no yeah, deal. very affordable. Mm -hmm. So that would all Ship be very us your affordable. stuff, and we will hold it for you until mm. the retreat. Oh, my gosh. Make it, makes it really, really cool. easy. You guys. So, okay. But as far as quilting on the beach, <laughs> although you're inside the hotel, the hotel where it's held is right on the ocean, right on Kailua Bay. Mm -hmm. So if you open the it's door beautiful. and you step outside, then you're on the beach. Yes. <laughs> we could do some hand stitching on the beach. Yes. Yes. Lots of activities in the evenings. We do trunk shows with our visiting instructors. Oh. We do a poker night. Oh. We have a show and tell dinner at the end of the week, yeah. and everybody oh. shares the things they've made. It's a wonderful You guys, this event. sounds Ooh. yummy. Very, very Gotta yummy. Come. <laughs> okay. Come. Wow. Okay. So, wow. February okay. and July. Okay. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, anything else you think we should share from the museum? No? I think this okay, is great. I, I, this is phenomenal. Well, this is phenomenal. You. Okay, so I really want to thank everybody. Thank you, Karen, thank for you. spending so much time with oh all of goodness. us I'm, and I'm sharing thrilled. the her enthusiasm for quilting mm -hmm. and Hawaiian quilting and the culture that is here. I'm sure all of mm -hmm. you guys can really feel that authentic enthusiasm. And um, so share lots of your love. Share this video around. You are a brand new museum. And, yes. and you were just in the newspaper last Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then the story from her local newspaper, which is what? West Hawaii Today. Okay, it has actually gone viral around. Around the country. Yeah, around the whole it's country. Everywhere. And it's being, <laughs> it was republished in what places? Oh, I, I read um, posts from Wichita, Kansas, and yes. from Kentucky, and in US News and World Report. Yes, and, I mean, it's, yes. It's just so here over. you've been able to see this quilt museum that has gone viral around the United States. Let's keep the viral <laughs> love going and keep sharing this and the enthusiasm that's out here in thank different you very unique much. places. So it's wow. very fun. All right, thank you, Karen. <laughs> Aloha. How fun. Thank Aloha, you for the beautiful everyone. welcome. Aloha, and I will see you guys again with another live video, and maybe we'll have to do a live video of her store and what it looks like over there. So love you guys Bye tons. Too. We'll see you guys a little bit later. Bye. Thank you.